Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. We'll go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We'll scroll on down to the Zim School. And we've done all these lessons so far, and if you've just arrived, you should take a look back at the previous lessons. We basically got through the basics. We saw conditionals and debugging, arrays and loops, abstraction, functions and events, configuration objects and animation, and then display objects. So what we're going to do now, this is very exciting, is we'll go into lesson seven on templates and building. And we've been doing the templates all along, so that's nothing new, but we'll do one again today. And then we're going to start building. Now what we're going to build, let me show you. Down at the bottom, well, if we go back to the Zim site, down at the bottom are the gold bars. There's a new gold bar called intro. Intro. If we press that, there's an intro example of Zim here, which summarizes all of the things we've been doing. And so we're going to rebuild that. Now if we click on it, here it is. And we can do it one video at a time. Isn't that cool? Does that look like fun? So we'll start off reminding us of the template, but as we go, there's other things in here that we may not have seen before or seen altogether. For instance, look at these panel colors. How do we get those? There's various animations in, so all these are animating together. There's a boundary there. There's an, an image which is clickable. So we're going to build this one today, but a quick look ahead. Here's components, where as we move that slider, or <laughs> this is a dial, as we move the dial, the slider moves and vice versa. And when we press a button, we get a color picker that allows us to change the, the color of the button there. We're going to see a drag along a path like that, that flips and goes the other way. And this path, path is editable. Once again, we'll see how to make that path editable or not editable, or choosing. Whoosh. And then over here, we've got a little, a yeah, little fun thing. We drag this rectangle and erase things. Oh, but look at that. They come back. There we go. Okay, so we're going to recreate this page and talk about it each step of the way, starting with the top left corner where we're dragging a circle within a boundary. We'll also set up the general page today with the Zim intro title and the colored panels. Okay, we go back to the Zim site where we get the where we get the template is from Zim code. We'll scroll down here. Now there's lots of different templates. This is the basic one right here. There's also a minimal, a minimal template, which is smaller and it really only has that much Zim in it. There's also templates here, click in here, for fitting in a window. That's what we've been using. Fitting outside a window. So in this case, Zim will always fill the whole screen, but the proportion of width and height is kept. So sometimes content is missing. Let's take a look. So if we F11, nope, F, yeah, F11 this to get out. All right, you see all of Zim is blue, but if we squeeze, you see what's happening there? part of Zim now is missing because it's keeping the aspect ratio. So in other words, it's making sure that the insides of the window, one of them is touching, or all of the insides are touching, at least in summer. <laughs> summer outside. So this one's called outside, that template. That's different than the fit mode, where it uh, only two of the windows, well, possibly all of them, if they're perfect, will be touching. So it's kind of the reverse of that. Now this one's good for something like fireworks where you don't really care if they go off the side, uh, various underwater scenes sometimes. So it might make it easier. 
the full mode always stays. Uh, so the stage now, the size of the stage is all this. And you have to do the scaling yourself. So there's manual scaling. And you can take a look at the code in those templates. It's not all that difficult to see what's going on there. There's also a tag mode where now this is Zim and it's being styled with CSS to change the size of its stage. And it's like it's sort of like a full mode, but within a certain tag that, that you're controlling the dimensions of. There's another tag mode right here where you give Zim the width and the height, and then Zim fits within. So you see how we're keeping the aspect ratio there. And this is like fit scaling where you don't we don't have to scale it inside Zim scales it for us. And then finally there's an example where assets are being loaded. We're going to see an asset later in, in this uh, build lesson, not in this video, but in a future one. All right, so there's also instructions here with notes and advice on which templates work for which situations. So you can certainly come in here, read more about those templates. There's also a template that is used with Adobe Animate. Adobe Animate used to be called Flash, it's still around. So if you use Flash or Adobe Animate, you might want to look at that. And this allows you to use Zim right inside of Adobe Animate and publish out through CreateJS and Zim. And uh, we load this thing called a Zim Shim that makes sure that the frame all gets set up. All right, well, we're going to copy the basic template that we've been using all along. We'll go into Adam. We've got a page called Lesson 07. We paste the template in. And we will call this Lesson 07 up here in the top. We're bringing in CreateJS and we're bringing in ZimJS. So we are going to be building something, uh, but we can also do a slight review. We're going to build in the fit mode with these dimensions. That means we can expect those dimensions. Here's the color of the stage and the color outside the stage, which is actually set by a CSS background color. We have the frame here, which is receiving all of those variables. So remember, putting things into variables doesn't necessarily do anything. It's the fact, well, these variables are constants, mind you. Uh, it's the fact that we're then passing those in to the frame that will actually create the fit mode and the width and the height and the colors. We receive an event when the frame is ready we will call this function, that's an arrow function. And zog is a way to console.log, a short form to console.log, so we'll see that in the console. We then receive the frame.stage property, we're storing it in a local constant called stage, and same with the width and the height in stage width and stage height. These potentially could change if this weren't a fit mode, with the fit mode, they won't change. But if it were a full mode, those potentially could change. So we're sort of just keeping them as lets, because lets can have their values change where constants can't. This is the template. Right now, we've got a circle in there. <laughs> it's funny, we do, we do want a circle, but we'll just get rid of that. And here's the stage.update to show various changes. And then that's it. Alrighty, we're ready to code then. Now, one of the first things we saw there were was the background pattern of these rectangles. Now, we can go in and start those rectangles manually, such as uh, like this, new rectangle. Let me make that bigger. How's it? New rectangle. And we would want to give that a dimension. Now, if there's four of them, it would be the stage width divided by two by the stage height divided by two. Ooh, math. 
half the stage width and half the stage height for the dimensions of the rectangle. And then we had some colors. Do you remember the colors? I don't. Let's pop on back and find that again down at the gold bars intro. There she be. Pink. All right, we'll click on it and we can have a look. So pink is the left top left hand corner. Now this is a Zim color. It means that um, we don't need quotes around it. You can find those in the docs. Shall we see where that is? I'll open up a new window here. Zim docs. And then right here are the various colors. So orange, green, pink, blue, all these colors uh, have values. If you want to see the values, you can hit view. And there's what they're doing. We're storing uh, the colors. And there they are. So pink is just the HTML color that. In other words, if we copied that and put it here, it would be the same. All right, so there's a new rectangle. We need to see this, dot add to. So dot add to is the simplest form of adding. It won't change in X and Y. So if it doesn't change in X and Y, the default X and Y of something is zero and zero. Therefore, this rectangle will go in the top left corner because its registration point is in the top left corner too. So we want to now open this in a browser. Open in browser. And there we have one of the rectangles made. We could go on and make the next rectangle like so. I think the right hand side, <laughs> geez, there's me, it was green. <laughs> Green. What a good memory I have. I'd fail at that Simon game, huh? Now we can't just add the green one to there because now you're going to get this. A green one over top of the pink one. You could do that. You could add it to and dot MOV. Move is relative movement. It's not MOVE. And we could move the stage width divided by two. So if we move it over half the stage width, we would get the desired effect. There's the pink, and the green has now been moved over half the stage width to be there. There's also, in combination of that, we could dot pose this at 0, 0, 0, right, like that. Top is the default, so if you want top, you don't have to put comma top there. So this will pose it at 0, 0, 0 from the right, and by default, 0 from the top. So that makes the same thing. If we did want it at the bottom, comma, bottom, like so, we could place that green one in the bottom right-hand corner or at the left-hand corner, left, like so, or indeed, even centered. So we save this, so it'll be centered at the bottom. Centered at the bottom. Okay, this would be centered in the middle. If we're centering both horizontally and vertically, there it is centered in the middle, but for centering in the middle, we have center. And that would probably be easier, and that also centers. Remember the registration point, dot reg, just to have a, oops, uh, dot outline, I mean, dot outline, just to have a general sense of that again, a bit of review as we go here on some of the basics. This has been centered, but its registration point is there. Hence, if we were to dot rotate it, dot rote, it would rotate, oh, as well, some amount, 45, it would rotate about the left-hand corner like that. But if we center the reg, that centers it and centers the registration point. There's the registration point in the center. So now it's spinning about the center or scaling about the center, etc. Okay, so a difference between center and center reg. However, we're not going to do any of this. We're going to make a tile because a tile can tile uh, objects quite easily without us having to worry about the position quite as much. So we'll make a new tile like that. We'll pass a rectangle in like so. So now we're tiling a new rectangle 
that is pink, we don't need to add it to the stage because we'll end up adding the tile. But for now, we want to say how many columns, two columns, and two rows. We don't want any spacing. This would be a spacing of five in the horizontal and five in the vertical. But we don't want any spacing, so we can leave it off. This is saying make four rectangles, two by two. And then we will dot center that. Well, we can even just add two, add two on the stage. Because we're half the stage width for each, adding is probably better. That puts this tile at zero, zero. Instead of bothering to center it, centering is just sort of doing some useless calculations. You don't need to. You can just add two. So uh, it kind of will work, except they're all going to be pink. So I don't know if you can see it. There's a faint line where those aren't quite bumping together. But uh, those are four pink rectangles. In Zim, we can randomize colors by putting them into an array here. Pink, orange. What are the colors? Was it pink, green? So how it goes is the top left, top right, then I think it was yellow, and then blue, like that. But if we put it in an array, the Zim V value, or in other words, a pick, uh, there's a special way to pass a parameter that we don't tell it exactly what it is. We let something pick it. So we let the tile pick the colors, or the rectangle pick the colors, depending on how the system is. So now these are just randomized colors, and sometimes they're duplicated as you can see. But if we pass in a series, like so, of these colors, then I think we're okay. Refresh. So now I'm refreshing, and we've got pink, green, yellow, blue. So in other words, by passing in the series, the tile says, oh, you want a series. And I just have to be a little bit careful about that. It may be that the tile every time it tiles is, is using a new series, but the way we've got it set up, you're fine to pass in a series there. Otherwise, we could set the series up here, uh, something like const. Don't go series is equal to series. Do you see why? This name, which is a global function, is the same as your variable name. We're going to run into a problem if we have that. So actually, let's just copy or cut this out of here and do this in two steps. So you have to call it something else like colors is fine. Colors. And then we take the colors and place it there. So we create a series. This hangs around until we use it. We store it in a constant called colors because we won't put a different type of series in color. We won't ever put a different object in colors. And then here, we make a new tile, half the stage width, half st and, and pass in the series. The first rectangle that's made will be pink, then green, then yellow, then blue. And we can see that here. Refresh, pink, green, yellow, blue. All right, so that's a bit easier than doing all that positioning. I think it is, well, once you know what, what's going on. I mean, the first way was very basic, and hopefully you could understand how we position each of the rectangles we made. But if we progress to a tile here, a tile is a bit more convenient. We didn't have to do this four times. You do have to know about series, but it becomes second nature pretty soon. All right, great. So there we've got our backing. And um, next we want to make a, a draggable circle on the left-hand side. So top left-hand corner. So that would look if, if we want to set bounds, we don't have to, but it sort of makes sense maybe to put this in a container and we can set the bounds as the size of the container. If we want to animate things in, I don't know if you noticed, but in that example, things animate in. So have a look here. We refresh here. First one animates in, second, third, fourth. So they all animated in fairly quickly, but uh, it's easier to animate in a container. So if we put all this stuff in a single container, we can just animate in the container. Same with any of these. So all four of these things will be in their own container, except for the Zim intro, which I think is there to start. So it just starts up there, 
and the rest, the drag circle and the circle animate in. Also, we're dragging, and it might be nice to have those dimensions of the container to drag that circle within. Now, containers don't really do that naturally. <laughs> might be nice if they did. For instance, this, this is in a container, and I can drag it outside the container if I so desire. I might have to think about how to stop that from happening. But uh, there, there you go. Um, even though a container is there, it doesn't mean that this will naturally happen. We have to set up a boundary for that. So let's see. We'll make a container then. And we're going to have to add the stuff to the container, which means we need a reference to the container later. We can't just go ahead and say new tile. This tile is going to sit in the background. We never, we never access it again. We don't do anything with it. So there's no point in storing it in a const. We could const backing is equal to, then it sort of tells us what it is. That's the only really re the only reason we want to do that. So we don't have to access it again. Anyway, I'm leaving that out. We come in here, we say uh, const first is equal to a new container, like that. Now, containers are tricky because you can either give them dimensions or not. If you don't give them dimensions, then they grow, they have a dimension, of whatever is inside them. But if you do give them a dimension, then they keep that dimension, unless that dimension is cleared, if you set the dimension to null, in a sense. Set bounds, it's called. Set bounds with nothing in it, then it will turn into a, hey, well, whatever's in me, uh, that's how big I'll be. But for now, we're happy setting dimensions on this. This is the stage width, comma, stage height. Now, by the way, there are two numbers in the front of those that default to zero. So this is a sort of a dual system here where you can give it a width and a height, and then it's automatically assumed it starts at zero. But you don't have to start them at zero, zero in the corner. But that's a bit advanced. So let's just give this a stage width, stage height, and we will dot add to. All we want to do is add that to the stage in the top left corner. Now our container is all ready. We can't see our container. Nothing shows up. We can see it if we go dot outline though. So as you're building, you're welcome to dot outline any display object and it will give you an idea of where it is. <laughs> Not much of an idea, just barely showing. So we're getting a bit of red along. It looks like these rectangles are overwriting uh, the other one. But anyway, there is an outline in there. That was our container. Oh, actually, I don't know why that is. That should be sitting on top. It shouldn't have any problem with an outline. Oh, that's why. Well, actually, isn't that a good thing? See what happened? Look at that. If I followed that red along further, I would have noticed it goes right to the edge. I was expecting it to come down here and across but it looks like we're outlining something that's a stage width and stage height. Do you see the problem? We wanted that container to be half of that. So now we should see that outline come across here. Uh, except for some reason, I took the outline off. I wanted that to happen. Dot outline. There we go. And refresh it. So now the outline comes down the middle here and across and back. Good. As expected, our container is in the top left corner. Okay, so now we add things to the container, such as a, a circle. Um, I don't know if we'll need to use the, uh, access the circle again. Probably not. New circle. And we're going to make it 100 and purple. And we'll dot center. Now, where are we going to center it? This would center it on the stage. Do you want to see? Refresh. Centered on the stage. But we want to center it on the first container that we made there. Center on first. So that's what these round brackets are for with the center to tell it what container we want to center it on. In this case, we're putting it inside of first. By default, it's the stage. So if we don't have anything, it will be the stage. But we want to put this into first, and we also want it to drag, like that. Now, once again, 
there it is centered on first, but when it drags, it can drag outside of the container. That's no problem. It is centered on the container, but then its bounds aren't set. I think that's too big. I can't remember if we had 50, maybe it was 80 or something like that. And we don't have to recreate it all that great. That's a little small, so yeah, 80. All right, but we're dragging it anywhere. Now the first parameter of drag, you can see this if you go to the docs. So go to the docs, type in drag. The first is a boundary, boundary. And the boundary, if you go down to the parameters, here's the parameters, default null, so usually there's no boundary. And this says a zim boundary object for the drag boundary. And if you want, you can type in boundary, or close there, and there's the drag boundary. Hit go again, there's a gesture boundary. And here is the zim boundary object, which accepts an x, a y, and a width and a height. So x and y and width and height. Let's go make that then. We can put it right in here, new boundary, like that, and put the x and the y and in there. But we can also do that in two steps. Might be easier for us to see. Const boundary is equal to a new boundary. Now, we said not to do this before when we were talking about series equals a series. But there's a difference here. Boundary equals a new boundary. This is the class boundary it has an uppercase B, so we're okay with a lowercase B. We have to give this the X and Y, zero comma, zero comma, stage width divided by two. Actually, more specifically, I suppose it would be first dot width comma first dot height. Otherwise, we're hard coding the stage width divided by two in two places. Up here when we made our first container and down here. If we ever chose to say make this three rectangles wide because we have more features to show then we would have to change it here, here, and down here, and down here. But the way we've done it now where we just say the width of the container that we're in we could only we only need to change it here and here. We don't have to change it here anymore because this will ask for that. So it's not a good idea to hard code numbers throughout your code. If, if you're referring to the same number, we would store it in a const first or indeed get a reference some other way. This width already exists, so let's access it. Now, there we go. That's a boundary. It's not quite right, but it's close. Well, it depends on what we want. And let's put that boundary in here. Boundary. And now let's check out our dragging. We refresh here. When I pick that up, huh. oh, okay, it does work. So I can't drag the center of the circle outside. So what's happening is the registration point is locked inside that boundary. So we need to subtract the radius from each of these edges. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, the circle's down here, and we're setting the boundary before we put the drag on the circle. So, uh, again, we could put minus 80. We could say, hey, uh, this will be 80. This will be 80. This will be whatever we calculate that to be. But then we've got all these 80s around. And remember how we said it's not a good idea to have all the numbers around, because then we'd have to go and change them all. So instead we will say, uh, well, I suppose it's a const radius r is equal to, I think 80 was too big, I'm gonna make it 70. So now we can use this r for radius here and here and here. Now we need to do something with the other side too, but let's see if the left-hand side works. So now as I move this, you see how that works on the left-hand side and it works on the top, but something strange has happened. That's because the boundary is the left and top, 
than the width of the boundary. So because we've moved the boundary over starting at 80 and left the width as the width of our container, you can see it goes right to the <laughs> right to the outside edge there. So we're going to have to subtract two times the radius. Here's half the radius and another half, well, the radius and another radius. We're going to have to subtract two times the radius from the ends of here. So I hold down the control key and I go minus radius times two. Minus radius times two gets subtracted from both those edges or from the width and the height, and now it stays inside. Cool. So if you don't quite get that, have a watch over that again and see what we did and the explanation. And there we go. Now we just need to put in some text there and uh, we'll be uh, over time, I think. So let's, let's do that now. Some text. New label. And we'll say drag the circle. Now if we want it to be dark text that would work out well and we'll position this at the bottom left of our container. So that is say at uh, 20 comma 20 comma left hand side at the bottom and comma on the first container. So this will position it like so and We'll check it out now. So there it is. It's a little dark, but we are welcome to dot alp that to change the alpha to 0 0.5, for instance. And there it is. If that's at all too big for you, the easiest way probably is just to go dot ska 0.8 or something like that. Now just watch it. You want to scale it before you position it probably. Sometimes that matters. The alpha doesn't matter. And we refresh here. And now it's been reduced. If you want to change it to white, then you would have to go into, I think, the fourth parameter here. Comma null, comma null, comma null to get to white text. So a way that we can um, cheat that in a sense because it may be that all our labels are going to be white. <laughs> I think that's the case. So if all the labels are white, watch what we can do. We can go right up top or wherever and say style equals like so. And then it's a type, we're wanting to put the style on all labels which is a type of uh, display objects. So we go type and here's where we can put styles on say all buttons or on all labels or on all circles etc. So we say label. We'll have these styles right here and the style we want is color colon white. <laughs> Shite. <laughs> color colon white. Oh no semicolon. So just watch it. We're not in CSS so no semicolon at the end. We would use comma, oh, sorry, we would use commas, <laughs> it's a comma, I did it. We would use commas if we wanted um, more styles in there. So now watch what happens. Our font color will be white. That's a little bit light for me now. So we'll bring up the alpha pair. As a matter of fact, we could, we could bring up, we could set the alpha as well on, on the style, but um, some of the things that we're doing in a label will be full alpha and some won't be. Most of them will be that alpha. Do you want to do the alpha as well? Get rid of that. Come on up here, comma. We can always override. If we want a full alpha one, we can put an alpha one right on the, the label. So alpha colon uh, 0.8. And we refresh here. And that brings the alpha up to a 0.8 drag the circle. Woohoo! So I think that's pretty cool, huh? Hopefully we didn't do that too quickly for you. You're welcome to see the docs about styles. If we wanted to, we could have just said color colon purple right there. Oh, no semicolon like that. Not use the type. So just style color purple, then everything would be purple. How about 
make a different color like uh, blue. So now everything that doesn't have a color is going to be blue. So this is blue. I guess the color of this has over by changing the color here. There's a circle with purple. If we don't put purple in there, that, that purple would override it. We just say a circle of radius R and refresh. Now the circle is blue, the text is blue, anything that could have a color applied to it that has not specified a color will be blue. So that's Zim style. We could say all circles. Uh, oh, we'd have to go into the type here. Comma circle. All circles would be orange. Color, colon, orange, comma. So color is blue, comma, any types will have these. Circle is orange. That is white, yeah, which is what, we, oh, but we said color blue. How did that work out? Color blue, circle, oh, we've activated the label again, so now the label is white. The label overrides this color. How exciting! Yes! Okay, I didn't mean to do that, but I don't want the color there. I do want to type, and we won't do the, the circle orange there. We will keep the alpha there, and we'll put the purple back in this. Purple back in the circle. <laughs> purple in the circle! And I think that that will lead us to, well, we've done the first, I mean, we did the first box, yeah? Do you agree? First box is done. Nice. We didn't get the master label in, but we'll do that right at the end anyway. First box is done. When we come back, we'll work on the second box. But before we go anywhere, I would like you to just hang around for a little bit. There's a mother and daughter uh, with a wearable computer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there it's working. It's kind of like it's happy! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Lights, good? Ah, good. You got it. Are you checking it out? No. So, um, it, it's wearable computing and it's an app called Hangy. So there it is. Uh, say hello to these girls. Do you remember how? Hi. Greetings. Oh, uh, oh, uh. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. Your robot has some glitches. Yeah, how's it going? So, not too bad, huh? That's a happy face right there. Ah! Woohoo! Hey, yeah. in real life and in computers. Ah, sort of the beatnik happening. Yes, I like it, I like it. Hello! Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, a new closing video about Hangy. Pretty cool, huh? So we'll see you the next time. This is Dr. Abstract for Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. It's fun to be building with you. Ciao.